Jordan, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. It's a particularly busy year here. Something like 2,300 people are attending Super Return International 2018. To you, is that an indicator of, of where we're at with the industry and how buoyant things are? Yeah, well, I think there's just been a lot of money raised over the last few years. There's lots of LPs, there's lots of strategies, and they're all here. It seems like they're all here this week. A busy time to have conversations. What are the key ones that you're hearing and what do people want to talk about? Well, I think everybody's interested in the market generally. I think our focus on distress, they want to know when's the next distress cycle. I'm not sure I have a great answer for that other than there's a lot of debt outstanding, so that's the starting point for a cycle. Um, but yeah, everybody's focused on, you know, where are you going to put money to work, how are you going to put money to work, and, uh, you know, where is the economy going? My, my focus is the United States, so we can talk a little bit about that. It's been an interesting few months, especially last month in the equity market, but yeah, that's generally the focus. There is a lot of talk about the bubble, if you like. Is it going to is the second longest bull market ever in history? So. Yeah. What's your kind of feel on that and, and where it's going? Well, as, a, as a, someone at Oak Tree, I certainly am more negative than positive. Uh, we're big believers in cycles. I think our mantra has been uh, go forward, but with caution, uh, which is what we've been doing. There's obviously more debt outstanding in the United States, non-investment grade than any time in history, $2.4 trillion. There's lots of triple C paper outstanding. I think what's been interesting in the last month, you've seen the equity markets respond pretty negative, at least, negatively, at least for a period of time, to uh, increased growth in the United States, which suggests to people that the Fed might start raising interest rates again, that inflation could be an issue, and that might have a negative effect on the U.S. economy. So it's always hard to tell. What we don't do is try to macro forecast. We don't try to predict when cycles come. We just need to be ready for cycles. What does being ready mean and, and what can we learn from the past in terms of making sure that this industry doesn't have a terrible, catastrophic reaction to anything? Well, as a buyer of distressed debt, I sort of hope for that situation, so maybe I'm the wrong person to ask. What we mean by being ready is to have capital available to us. So when uh, debt markets in particular fall and there's opportunities to buy debt at a discount, you're ready to go. Uh, in the meantime, it's making smart investments, again, proceed with caution uh, in an environment that just has been up to the right for many, many years. Um, Obviously, we live in a fairly interesting geopolitical time as well. Sure. We've got an extraordinary man incumbent in the White House. What sort of influence do you think those kind of geopolitical aspects have? Man, I wish I, wish I knew. It, is, uh, it has been fascinating to watch the last uh, year and a half here. Um, I always put that on sort of the, the back burner of potential risk to the market because he's relatively volatile and you just don't know what he's going to do. Um, but we don't rely on that. You know, we just have to we just have to look at we take the bottoms up approach, looking at a company in the context of what it does on a day to day basis, uh, understanding there's macro risk, but not necessarily relying on macro risk. And how much do you look at disruption? Because that's the other factor that everyone wants to talk about and, yeah. and the industries that you're looking at how disrupted are they already or how much big is the potential for that i will tell you for our strategy in particular which is a private equity strategy focused on distressed opportunities we really try to stay away from the thematic distress opportunities so if you think about brick and mortar retail right now that's really the distress du jour that's going through a massive change a secular change we're not going to touch that because what I can't tell you is how fast that ice cube melts. That's not our strategy. In a concentrated private equity portfolio, that's really not for me. So we're really trying to find companies that have a reason to exist, that um, we can do something with them as owners, as active owners of those businesses, um, and that have, in the absence of a major macro negative trend, have the opportunity to grow in a regular environment. And we've talked in the past about sort of the reputation of private equity and, and, and where you're at in terms of the kind of global uh, outlook on what your industry does and the influence you can have. What do you feel the position is at the moment with the general public and what you do? You know, I don't hear a lot of negative these days. I think there was, you know, a lot of talk maybe five, seven years ago, particularly in Europe, you heard about the locusts and all that. You know, especially in the United States, I don't think private equity is, is as negatively viewed as maybe it was even five years ago. Is that becoming, is that because it's becoming one of the sort of old established houses now? Yeah, I mean, I just, you think about the volume of capital available in private equity today, it's just a known quantity. It's not new anymore. It's, you know, there's a 30 year history there now. 
So we've talked a bit about what the conversations are here at the moment. What do you think we'll be talking about in a year's time and what do you think we can see in the sort of next 12 months to come? Probably the same thing, probably the same thing. I mean, in the absence of there being some kind of material downward move in the economy, which I don't anticipate at this point, but who's to say we'll be having the same conversations. Jordan, thank you so much for joining us. My Good pleasure. To hear thank you very thank much. You.